Hey, welcome back, everybody. We're back here on the uh, Chase for Lab or the Meteorology Lab and looking at these, this uh, summer like appearance to the sky here. And you can see how the cumulus clouds are not really moving anywhere. We do have a little bit of upper air energy, and you can see those cirrus clouds coming at us from the southwest. So we do have a little bit of upper air flow moving into the area. And that's what we're looking at right now outside. Just uh, what looks like maybe a little bit of an anvil coming from storms to the south. That looks uh, like some awfully dense cirrus there. And we are pretty much devoid of the low cloud. So that's due to the loss of heating. And mostly, mostly we're just left here with debris clouds. So on a day like tonight, when you see something like this, you're going to be looking at maybe the cirrus to just kind of uh, start falling apart and uh, a little bit of partly cloudy skies for the rest of the night. Okay, back to our weather charts. Now that we're back in the saddle here, let me know how the audio is because I've just had to hook up everything after this road trip and I was pretty wiped out and I slept about probably 11 hours last night. I was really worn out and, and just now starting to catch up here. And let me take a quick look at the chat here. Uh, Andrew, first one in, says, Hey, you all, and Sue M. Justin Pulliam is here. Wheel O2C uh, says, Welcome back. I appreciate that. Kevin McKinney says, Hi, all. Fun with tech. Hello, every good evening, everyone. Ryan Toomey is back to the grind of forecasting. Indeed. Eddie W., hope everybody had a good weekend. Michael Burrell says, Good evening, Tim, and everyone. Jumping Flash, good uh, greetings all. Ryan Toomey sent me a few emails. Haven't got to those. I'm pretty far behind. 80 degrees there at Crestline where Ron Chalfon is. 4,600 feet there. Stormy end of the week coming up for the Midwest States from Ryan. Loud and clear from Justin. Audio is good from Ron. Audio very good from Robert Terrell. Ryan Toomey is looking at the forecast models and heavy flight schedules this weekend. And Michael Brell says things uh, look good here and I've been so far out of touch I haven't looked at emails like I said and I haven't even looked at the weather since I left there the other night I had to cancel that one broadcast because uh, a couple nights ago because of the audio settings they're very complicated going between the broadcaster software the devices and all that and I really had to sit down for an hour and figure all that out on the laptop but um, I think everything on this desktop here is running fine so this is the uh, weather picture for today and you can see we've got a weak pressure gradient across Texas so indeed things are pretty summer like we do have maybe a little bit of an onshore component in South Texas there and that's feeding some MCS's back out over Mexico and you can, you can kind of see how there's higher pressure out in this area of the Gulf and very low pressure so that's kind of a Mexican monsoon pattern that they're undergoing there and normally we see a shift northward during the summer and uh, we see the monsoon move more into Arizona and New Mexico and up into Colorado and Utah by August it's very similar to the Indian monsoon starts out way in the south part of the subcontinent subcontinent and shifts northward as the weeks go on. Yeah, we can check out the SPC panels here. Pretty empty of severe weather. Just uh, multi-cell clusters here and there. And the mountains getting, getting active, getting a little bit of flow coming up from Mexico there. So all that's uh, kind of working together, the Mexico and monsoon pattern and what's going on in the Intermountain region there. Normally it's uh, pretty um, pretty fair in Arizona and New Mexico this time of year, and they get some pretty uh, strong heat waves starting up, getting into the first few weeks of June. Okay, here's the 200 millibar chart. That's as far as I can, well, maybe I can shrink it like that. Yeah, there we go. We'll try that. Okay, 250 millibar chart showing... Maybe a little bit of a subtropical jet down in South Texas right there. 
we've got those 65 knot winds here in Texas, something keeping the flow underway. We've got the polar front jet well to the north, up in the Dakotas, to a trough in the Midwest there, and then exiting out over New York and New England. Hmm, so maybe we're getting a bit of a piece of that, or I don't know what's going on in between. We're going to have to look around and check some of the other charts to find out what's going on. We've got a split over California, too. You can see we've got that 60-knot flow along the California coast right there. And then this shows us the 500 millibar chart. We can see the flow weaken quite a bit in the southern U.S. here. Only about 10 to 20 knots there. So that tells us the subtropical jet pattern might be dominant in the south and southwest. And then just looking at 700 millibar chart, you can see we've gotten rid of a lot of the capping. We don't find any 10 Celsius readings, maybe some here in Arizona. And then a couple of eights here in Texas and a few sixes. So that's getting into kind of an uncapped regime, and that's the reason we've got numerous multi-cells all over the Texas and Gulf Coast area. And then 850 millibar chart, I'm going to go to SPC for that one. We'll look at their upper air chart sets there. Let's see if the new ones are in. 31st, is that correct? Yeah, yeah, this is the latest from about one hour ago. This shows the low level flow across Texas. In the green corresponds to, uh, let's see, that's going to be either mixing, mixing, mixing ratio or dew point. And let me see if I can figure that out. I think we're looking at mixing ratio here. But anyway, the denser greens, those are going to be the higher quantities of moisture. And we're going to look at precipitable water a little bit later. So most of that's lurking along the coast here and in the Rio Grande area. And things are a little bit drier as you go north there. Looks like some very uh, strong moisture when you get out to the Bahamas and Cuba there. That's kind of interesting. I wonder if that's going to make its way out to the Gulf Coast uh, eventually. There's the satellite picture there showing a lot of cirrus debris. And uh, these storms down in the Del Rio look area, those look uh, pretty sheared there, don't they? See those uh, long anvil streamers coming off those storms there. So that's helping to ventilate those storms. And likely what we're seeing is a little bit of subtro subtropical jet energy across Texas, kind of like what I mentioned earlier. Very weak flow in the mid-levels, though. And these storms here are not quite as sheared. We've got more of a bulky kind of rounded shape to the anvils on those. So the further south that you go, the stronger the wind regime. Okay, there's our um, thickness chart and isobars. Looks like we got maybe a little bit of a front there in the Pacific Northwest, maybe something like that. Working into the Washington area. And then I see maybe an old frontal boundary through here. Got uh, almost four thickness lines through Nebraska right here. And then nothing at all in Texas, maybe just one little line here. So we are not very bear clinic at all. And that's not, that's not going to support a 60, 70 knot polar front jet. So either that's uh, residual upper level energy or that is the subtropical jet across uh, this area through here. Most of the polar front jet support, that's going to be up in the Midwest and in the Dakotas, and that's definitely what we're seeing in this area here tonight. And then the old Hudson Bay Vortex, right there over Ontario and Hudson Bay itself, of course. It looks like nothing uh, really off in the Pacific. Usually this is when we see increasing anticyclogenesis out in this area. Got one little 
funnel system right there barely hanging on that's probably going to come on shore around british columbia and that's about it uh, <clears throat> pretty quiet out in that direction and we'll take a look at some soundings i want to kind of com compare north and south across texas amarillo where we have those uh weak anvils There's the scooty from Amarillo, and you see kind of a lack of capping, and you see very weak wind profiles. Barely get 40 knots, 40, 45 up there at the top. Then you can see the very weak flow in the low levels. And no southerly flow feeding this activity. So it's all coming from the mountainous areas in New Mexico. Then we go further south to Midland. Yep, we're picking up uh, stronger winds there. 60 knots there at the top of the column. Tropopaws up at about 40, 41,000 feet. And we start picking up a little low-level moisture there. Looking at a moisture quality, about 10 to 11 grams per kilogram there. And then we go down to Del Rio. Flow is uh, even a little bit stronger there, 65 knots. And moisture quality on the order of 12 to 14 grams per kilogram. I think we were seeing 20s out there in Cuba and the Bahamas. Let me see if I can pull up a chart in that area. I guess that's in Dominica there. I don't think we have any direct readings out in that area. Bahamas, I think that's too far north. Then I'll try Jamaica. I'm just trying to see where the deeper moisture is lurking. Because with a southerly gradient we have, that could uh, eventually find its way up to Texas and the plains. Uh, we'll look at the model data on that and see, see if we can find it there. Okay, dynamics. This is the pattern for tonight here. So you see the northwesterly flow across the Dakotas there. And very weak mid-level flow here in Texas and Oklahoma. Pretty uh, cut and dry. And then just a quick look for the next few days. Trough across the Great Lakes moves eastward. That heads out. And then we get this bit of ridging moving into the Great Plains. So not very good there for uh, some of the chase tours. Yeah, very weak flow. This is uh, kind of depressing there. I see a little bit of energy right here in southern New Mexico in west Texas there. Something going on there. Some sort of trough there over Arizona coming in. And uh, I think part of that makes its way into the Central Plains and then the other fragment just south of Arizona here later in the week. This is Friday and Saturday. This is almost kind of a Tutlow or... I don't know if we're quite in the season for that. Anyway, we'll check that out here shortly. Okay. One thing I want to use the models for here is the uh, precipitable water. This is one thing that we need to start looking at this time of year, especially since we have flash flooding risks starting to increase. We start dealing with more slow-moving storms, more training, and it's good to have an idea when that kind of pattern is coming up. And also if you have a very fast flow aloft, deep moisture is going to support some of your stronger severe storms. So we're still in the season for severe weather at least for the next couple weeks and then around the 20th, 21st of June it's going to start, well, let's say mid-June after mid-June that's going to start moving up into Kansas and Nebraska. And then July, most of the severe weather, that's going to be found in the Dakotas and Minnesota and Iowa. Okay, yeah, you see the uh, higher precipitable water down to the south. There's some uh, two-inch values down there, right in this area right here. And then one and a half inches coming on shore here in Texas. So let's see what the trend is over the next uh, few few days here. 
Looks like we're seeing less of an east-west gradient into, New Me into Old Mexico, and now some of that's going to start working its way northward, it appears. So we're starting to build in a little bit of cyclogenesis here, and we should see that moisture starting to come north. Yeah, you see those values starting to come up there. This is getting up to Saturday and Sunday. We've got two-inch values starting to come on the coast there in Louisiana. Got a subtly gradient all the way up from East Texas up to Iowa. Then after that, it appears we have some sort of cold air mass start to build southward. You see it kind of drying out in this area. But uh, a lot of moisture hanging around there in Texas next week. I think that's going to bring up the uh, flow there quite a bit, and I think we're going to be back in severe weather season as that moves south. That means baroconicity, that means stronger mid and upper level winds, especially in this area here. The reappearance of the dry line and the reappearance of loaded gun soundings. So I think that'll be in store probably around, uh, we're looking at maybe June 5th, June 6th, June 7th here. So probably along the Texas Caprock, Red River, North Texas, and Oklahoma, we'll be watching for that. And let's see here, getting towards the end of the period, 192 hours out for June 7th. You can see some of the moisture starts making it all the way from the Dakotas. So I think we're going to have chase opportunities here start to pick back up. And then things get a little bit more dynamic there towards the very end in the Midwest. So that's for the 13th, 14th. Looks like for Texas, too. Very interesting. Let me just compare this. You see the how this map looks in mid-June compared to right now. Let me run this all the way back. So right now we've got a lot of the moisture kind of filtering into the mountains right there, all the way up here. And then we get to the end of the run. That's pretty much cleared out. Uh, we're back to dry conditions. This is very normal for June. And a lot of the moisture has kind of moved north and northeast after the end of those couple weeks there. Okay, so let's, uh, yeah, one other map I wanted to show you here was the dew points. And this will show us a little bit more of the detail on the low level flow. Okay, so we start out here at the very beginning and we can see a little bit of return flow starting up. We've got this kind of amorphous high pressure across this axis here from Florida up to the Dakotas. So just consider that an axis right there of high pressure. And then on the other side, just kind of very weak southerly flow coming up into Colorado. But most of that is actually went into this area of Mexico, like I said earlier. Okay, so southerly flow starting to bring that moisture up. Do we have a dry line? No. No dry line there. If there was a dry line, it would probably be back in these mountainous areas here. So probably what we'll see is a little bit, bit of sea breeze activity, I think, maybe along the Texas coast. And wherever we have boundaries further inland, uh, some chances for rain there since things are kind of uncapped. You can see those higher dew points starting to move inland there. Some of the 60s making it up into the southern Dakotas. And I think up here we're starting to see a little bit of a dry line become established up in that region. And as that flows north, starting to establish one out in West Texas, right in that area right there. Okay, so we're up to June 2nd. This is Friday. Things are pretty much solidly, southerly flow. And I think we got a bit of a boundary here in northeastern Iowa, northeastern Iowa to South Dakota. So maybe a chance for some activity right there. Dry line becoming even more established in the Texas Panhandle. 
up to the North Platte area. And now you see things uh, start to change a little bit. I think we've probably had a little bit of mesoscale interaction here. We see some northerly flow right here in the Texas Panhandle. This is on the evening of June 3rd on Saturday. Little boundary there. I think we might have had an MCS moving in through this area here. So some pretty good chances for rain, I think, here. That MCS probably propagating overnight eastward stuff like that going on dry line around the Abilene area down to central Texas so things starting to shape up a little bit here and then towards the end of the pattern you see that cold air mass start to sink southward this is in the uh, June 5th June 6th 6th time frame driven by this 1024 millibar high pressure area so lots of uh, very strong boundaries in this area and also upslope flow all the way up into Colorado right in there. And that'll plunge southward a little bit. That's going to be about the only problem that's going to drive some of the activity down into Texas. But uh, looks like maybe it kind of stalls out about there. Some very deep flow going up into the Pecos River area of Texas. So I guess probably we're going to see some chaseable severe weather coming up here in the next uh, week or two. There's another little frontal boundary moving south through Oklahoma around the 9th and 10th. And then we pick up the southerly flow again. So this is a much different pattern from what we have right now. See how much of a difference there is. Things are very weak right now. Most of the better moisture down to the south and then later on it's uh, that moisture as well to the north. Okay, let me take a look at the uh, chat here and uh, see what we got going on. Gotta find my way, way through the chat here. Michael Burrell 13 says, uh, sounds good. Audio sounds good. Mike Lestwick says, hello all. Tech issues, no fun, according to Ryan Toomey's. Some clouds in Denver. Loud and clear from Ryan. Hello from everybody from Tree Nelson. Ryan says, NHC. Discussion topic this weekend coming up for the 2017 season. Justin Pulliam says, Go 16 infrared the other night when Houston and Corpus radars were down. Very short frame interval was nice to have. Yeah, that's definitely when those uh, new satellites pay off. Uh, if you've got both Houston and, and Corpus Christi going down, that area in between, like around Victoria, Port Aransas, you're going to have very bad coverage in that area, and it can be very difficult to forecast any activity you have going on in between. Of course, there are the TDWR radars. I think that one's up at the Intercontinental Airport, though, so it's a little bit of out of range, but you want to be able to fall back on your other sources when the radar network goes offline. Brett Dean says, made it 61 degrees, and for in southern Jersey on the line for severe weather tomorrow, lots of rain up to five inches in five days. Ryan bookmarked the Marshall Space Flight Center Go16 link page for direct access to it. Yeah, if you just go to the Marshall Space Flight Center Go's page, then you all can get the Go16 data also. 71 degrees with light rain in Canyon Lake, Texas from Agent Astronaut. Getting no audio on his side. Brett Dean says, hit the like button. Cape values tomorrow. Expecting too mild for my liking, 2,000 joules per kilogram. Tree Nelson getting good audio. Ryan says, Gulf moisture picking up more. Very warm water temperatures in the Gulf of Mexico with the buoy station recordings. Sarah Wood up there in Indiana checking in. Hope everybody had a good, good weekend. 
Ryan is mentioning more 80s dew points popping up. Yeah, also that uh, evapotranspiration from the cornfields. Those can really pump some dew points into the boundary layer there. And uh, some of the highest dew points uh, ever observed were in Illinois and Iowa. There's been some local readings there up above 80 during the uh, summers. Michael O. says Memphis got popped last Saturday night. Third largest power outage in history in terms of customers. Yeah, that's uh, definitely no fun, and that's the reason I keep a generator here. We're on a rural pattern power here. We've got an electric cooperative that does the power here, and uh, the power outages have been getting better in the past couple months. I've never, or the past couple years. Let me try that again. The past year, I haven't been able to, haven't had to load up the power generator yet and get that going. But before that, we were getting an outage like every two or three months there for a while. That was pretty annoying. Okay, let me see if there's anything else I want to cover. That's kind of the big picture. We're just going to see the moisture on the increase. A little bit of a rehash of spring there for a couple weeks. And then gradually things will start shifting northward. Okay, I think that's probably about all I, got. all I have for tonight. I appreciate you watching, and uh, yeah, please definitely hit the uh, like and subscribe button, and uh, we will see you tomorrow. Take care.